the Bronze Age, the rise and fall of the Hittites, the domination of the Greeks, then the Romans, the Byzantines, and finally the Ottoman Turks. Stories here are layered like an archaeological dig. How have they formed this fully lived-in landscape? I've been in Turkey before, but what I think I remember about Turkey and what I'm discovering about Turkey are vastly different. For 4,000 years, these dramatic volcanic formations have housed hand-dug tunnels and chambers. Underground networks store food, shelter animals. They've been churches, monasteries, and natural fortresses. In the 15th and 16th centuries, the Byzantine army used the tallest of these formations, like the Yushasar Castle, as an early warning system. With fire and mirrors, messages were sent from high top to high top, as far as Istanbul. Well, we're climbing the hill. We're going to look at the fairy chimneys when we get to the other side. I understand there's a really nice development of them there. Early Christians found refuge in this area of Goreli. The tunnels to the underground structures could be completely sealed off by huge stones. It's uh, very unusual. It's uh, uh, unique in all the world. I've never seen anything quite like it. I have seen volcanic land before, but very different from this. The rocks themselves are impressive, but the interaction of humans and how those spaces were used for worship and study and gathering and, and building community, it's, uh, it's a fascinating story altogether. In the foreground, in the valley beneath us, there is already several fairy chimney formations came into being. Those single standing formations are called as... We are going to explore some cave churches here. We are going to learn about the early Christianity. Inside the church of St. Barbara, the early Christian monks drew a depiction of Christ on the throne as well as lines on the rocks to give the impression that cut stones were used in the construction. Cappadocia is, I mean, there's nothing like that anywhere in the world I've been, and it's just, uh, it's just a stunning place. Craftsmen in this region of Turkey have been manufacturing fired earthenware for almost 10,000 years. I always admire craftsmen who can work with their hands. And that it's a traditional that has, what, five generations, I believe, that was in my city. He has done this before. We are now going to the weekly marketplace of one of the central Anatolian towns and we are going to see what kind of business activities the local people are doing in that marketplace. Colors are just incredible, aren't they? Yeah. I'm kind of It's good though. Fado. She wants to give you the dog as a gift. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> Ask her why she doesn't like that dog. <laughs> that the women have been very open about coming up to us and uh, having their picture taken. What, how wonderful they've been and what a good impression they've left. The headscarves worn by these Muslim women are called hijabs. 
The term refers to the veil which separates man or the world from God. I love the bazaar. I think it's a wonderful way to see the common people, and we've certainly seen what they buy and how many choices they have in the market. I'm amazed that there are so many fruits. Besides the ancient cultural heritage of the country, we see local people. We're going to go see how they make their bread in this village. This traditional flatbread is called markuk. It is baked for two to three minutes on a domed or convex metal griddle, known as a saj. Most Turkish families eat fresh bread with every meal. He's almost as good as I am. Thank you. This bread is wonderful with the cheese and parsley. Prior to 1997, children in Turkey were obliged to undertake five years of education. Thereafter, eight years. And in 2012, new legislation extended compulsory education to 12 years. My name is Charles, and it's spelled like this. And your name is... Yes. What? I had a lot of difficulty getting the name, the pronunciation of the name, but when I had the student write it, then I was able to pronounce his name correctly. And it was, it was very interesting. It was a good learning experience for me, too. <laughs> my buddy. This is my buddy. And since we believe so strongly in education, I'm very pleased to see how, how well the students interact and work with their teachers. Mark Antony of the Roman Empire is said to have picked the Turkish Riviera, also known as the Turquoise Coast, as the most beautiful wedding gift for his beloved Cleopatra of Egypt. The land surrounding these Mediterranean waters is home to abundant natural and archaeological points of interest. Many are only accessible by water vessels called goulets. Among the archaeological treasures are two of the seven wonders of the ancient world, the ruins of Masalos and the Temple of Artemis. That kind of uh, historical uh, building within these uh, mountains, I never knew that something like that even existed. Thirty-five years ago, I had a sailing instructor that sailed his small boat all over the world. And he told us that the most beautiful place in the world to sail was the coast of Turkey. And this is it. Turkey's landscape has been shaped by a rich human history dating back to the end of the last ice age. But it is the people who live here today that make the most lasting impression. I think the people are really generous and kind to take us into their homes, to spend time with us and explain what they do, you know, all of these things. It's fascinating to experience uh, somebody else's culture and how people actually live and it's really quite similar to what we, we ourselves do. You'll never be able to convince somebody of what they would see or witness if they did not come personally. With one arm reaching into Asia and the other into Europe, Istanbul Turkey is the only transcontinental city in the world. 
formerly known as Constantinople and nicknamed the City of the World's Desire. This city has served as the capital for the Roman, Byzantine, Latin, and Ottoman empires. The Bosphorus Strait is a natural border between the Asian Turkey and the European Turkey. It has always held strategic, commercial, and military value. Until the completion of the grandiose Bosporus Bridge in 1973, the strait was also the only means of transportation between the two halves of this divided city. Extravagant mosques adorn the city on seven hills. Bustling bazaars and markets offer a glimpse into the city's lifeblood of commerce. With a population of over 14 million, you never know who you'll meet or what thrilling adventure awaits you in the Turkish city of Istanbul. Allah Akbar, Allah Akbar. Allah Akbar, Allah. My name is Ashkin Tunca. I am one of the muezzins of this mosque, this blue mosque. Muezzins are those who call to prayer, who invite people to the mosque. I'm from Konya. Uh, it's a city in the center of Turkey. I uh, wanted to be a muezzin because I knew that I had a good voice and I had educational, I mean, how to, how to recite Quran well. And so I became a civil servant as a muezzin uh, in 1988. And unfortunately, I had to, I mean, pass to university as a teacher. And for about seven, 18 years, that is 18 years, and I was a teacher of English. Three years ago, I gave a concert. A man from Istanbul came to that concert and he listened to me and he said, you should come to Istanbul. So I came to this mosque in uh, uh, 2012. This mosque, it was started in uh, 1609 and finished in 1660. Within, in, in this mosque, everything was, I mean, uh, finely designed. This, this grant, for example, was, was, I mean, covered by a special brick, which makes this mosque warm in, uh, in uh, winter and cool in summer. The most, and the, the most important I mean, uh, and, uh, uh, thing for me is here to call to prayer. So when the, those who, uh, who hear the call to prayer, they come to mosque and they meet each other, they learn some things and, and so we help uh, the people in that way. So that's why to be a muezzin is very important. İstanbul'a gelişim uh, 1985 yılında oldu. Amacım denizci olmaktı çünkü bu bizim ata mesleğimiz ve amacıma da ulaştım diyebilirim o gelişimle beraber. Kaptan olmak benim gençliğimde de hayallerimi süsleyen bir meslekle ata mesleği olması hasebiyle beraber. İstanbul iki kıta üzerine kurulan bir şehir demiştik. Dünyada başka bir şehir daha yoktur iki kıta üzerine kurulan. E, bu özellik İstanbul'u farklı bir konuma taşıyor. İstanbul halkı belki bunun farkında değildir ama e, her gün iki kıta arasına gider gelir. E, abuki bazı insanlar vardı ki karşı şehire bir sonraki şehire bile gidip gelmekten İstanbul Boğazı e, dünyanın en yoğun deniz trafiğinin yaşandığı kanallardan bir tanesidir belki de birincisidir diyebiliriz. 2013 senesinde 91 bin civarında bir gemi. Kaptan olmak Boğazda kaptan olmak e, bence ayrıcalıklı bir e, iştir. Şundan dolayı İstanbul Boğazı'nda herkes bilmeyen kaptanlık yapamaz. Akıntılarıyla beraber, meteoroloji yapısıyla beraber bazı tehlikeler arz eder. Belli bir tecrübenin oluşması gerekiyor burada kaptanlık. 
İstanbul insanı yaşadığı şehrin önemini biliyor, farkında. Bence ayrıcalıklı olduğunun da farkında İstanbul insanı. Ee, neden ayrıcalıklı? Demin de bahsettik söhbetimizin başında. İstanbul e, kültürel bakımdan, tarih bakımından çok zengin bir şehir. Sprawling spice markets offer a variety of handmade Turkish delights whose Arabic name literally means throat comfort. Glimpse the unearthly beauty of Hagia Sophia and the stately Yali mansions that line the water's edge of the transcontinental Bosphorus Strait. Step back in time as you explore the ancient empires in the thriving metropolis known as Istanbul. A particular Turkish expression is often used to greet visitors and to make them feel at home. Has Galdinis, the direct translation, your arrival is lovely. Over the millennia, there have been many languages spoken here, and many expressions to describe people's comings and goings through fantastic settings, the landscapes of Cappadocia, and the dazzling waters of the turquoise coast. Istanbul, Turkey's largest city, has been the capital of empires since its founding during the 7th century BC. Palaces, churches, and mosques have held fast through the Roman, the Byzantine, and the Ottoman periods. Today, they define the Istanbul skyline. And down on the streets, the markets and bazaars thrive with a blend of art, literature, and food that, simply stated, puts the love into lovely. Along with his siblings, Rustem Karaja keeps his friendships fresh with a hearty cuisine and a warm demeanor. Navigating Turkey's Bosphorus Strait, which divides Europe and Asia, is Nusret Ilkyash Chiti. And in the old bazaar, comprising nearly 3,000 shops, we can find Nick Merdinyan and his distinctive manner of passing along words of peace. My name is Nick Merdinyan. I am Anatolian Armenian from Kastamonu. These are all hand-painted works. I'm working on leaves, and the type of leaves are Dif and Bakya. These are tropical plants. For a long time, once a year, I go to Florida to pick my leaves and dry them between my books, which I call them they sleep about a year between my books. I start with Islamic design at the beginning, but after some time, I add Christianity designs Judaism, Buddhism, and universal designs. So uh, I cover all religions, beautiful messages, and now my works are known all around the world. The idea became just by chance, just after my son's baptist. One of our cousins come our home for congratulation. She bring us a gift. It was a plant of the Fambakya. Two of the leaves of this plant become yellowish. I cut those two leaves and put in my book in the library. After a couple of years, I have seen those two beautiful leaves was perfectly dried. I had a friend who was a calligrapher. So those two leaves I bring to him just to see what we can do. On one of them, signature of Sultan Suleiman the Magnificent. And on the other one, we decided to do by Yunus Emre in Kufi letters. Love who loves you. I was going to do frame and 
take it home. The same day, I had a couple, American couple, who came to my shop for, uh, to buy a pipe. I just want to share with them too, those two uh, leaves I just get from my friend. And right there, under magnifying glass, written Lord's Prayer in Arabic letter. If I abandon myself, don't abandon me, my Lord. I think she misunderstood me when I was showing her. She said, how much? I said, I have no idea. This is not for sale. But she said, she I like it so much. It is something very different I have never seen before. And I would like to buy at least one of this. Because I thought it was going to be too expensive to her. Uh, maybe she won't buy it. I said to her, $500. Just after a few minutes, I talked with her, her husband. They bought it, I cannot believe. Now they call me Lord of the Leaves and they call to my works Leaves of Tolerance and Peace. Özellikle yani işim de çok seviyorum. İş de çok keyifli, ev ayrı bir keyifli. İstanbul çok hızlı bir şehir. Ben şehir demeye bazen çekiniyorum. Sanki bir mega kent demek daha doğru olur. Yaklaşık 20 milyona yakın bir nüfus var. Biz de bu nüfusu bir kıtadan diğer kıtaya taşıyoruz. Bir kıtadan bir diğer kıtaya. Biz bunu her gün gün içerisinde belki 20 kere Avrupa'dan Asya'ya, Asya'dan Avrupa'ya taşıyoruz yolcularımızı güvenli bir şekilde. Tabii İstanbul gibi bir manzaranız olduktan sonra zaten Boğaz, İstanbul Boğazı yaklaşık Yılda 50 bin transit gemi yetişi olmakta. Yaklaşık 28 parça gemimiz var. 50 adet iskele bizden. 40 milyona yakın hatta bu sene 40 milyonda geçeceğiz zannetsem bir insan taşıyoruz. Emek kopacak kopabileceğimi zannetmiyorum yani. Meslek sonrası da ufak bir tekne alıp tekrar yani deniz. Bizim bir bağımız ya, yani sanki artık adamız zaten gemi adamı. Denizden kopmak asla yok. Rüstem Karaca, ee, babamın teşviğiyle başladım. Babam Recep Karacan. 86'dan beri e, babamla beraber Hasan abim, Serdal kardeşim ben olmak üzere 3 kardeş işletiyoruz. Ben buraya 78'de lokanta işiyle uğraşıyoruz. Seviyorum, sevdiğimiz bir iş. Bizden sonra da inşallah çocuklarımıza devretmeyi düşünüyoruz. Her gün günlük menü çıkar bizde. Osmanlı mutfağı, Türk mutfağı, Fransız mutfağından bazen. Hünkar beğendi, ben de çok severim. Efendim, sulu yemeklerin hepsini severim. Yemek ayırmam. Allah biz babamla, babamızdan öğrendiğimiz, ustamızdan öğrendiğimiz. Her gün bir yenilik katmaya çalışıyoruz. E buranın müdavimleri işte, e bankalar. Piyasa esnafı ve diğer sağdan soldan gelen müşterilerimizle arkadaş gibiyiz. Ne bileyim bir aile gibiyiz. Genelde her gün aynı müşteriler genellikle gelir. 40 sene olmuş yani ben burada olalı. Arkadaşız artık yani müşteri gözüyle bakmıyoruz biz onlara. Bir kız, bir erkek, iki tane evladım var. Çocuğumun bir tanesini gastronomi okuttum. Bundan sonra da inşallah çocuklarımız da öyle devam eder. Kardeşimin de çocuğu var mesela erkek çocuk. Birlikte yürütmeyi düşünüyorlar. Biz bu zamana kadar getirdiysek ondan sonra, onlar da bundan sonra devam ettirirler diye düşünüyorum. The Turkish expression for bidding farewell to friends and visitors alike, Gule Gule Giden, which means, may you go laughing.
What will you discover in Turkey? Avanos is the entrance city to the Cappadocia region of Turkey. Set in a peculiar landscape, with forms that burn themselves into the minds of all who witness them. These fanciful fairy chimneys, carved out of volcanic tuff by millennia of Mediterranean wind, have actually housed generations of Turks, such as Ismail and his family. The red silt ceramic clays of the Kizlermak River has given shape to a famous pottery industry that has been the economic backbone of the region since the Hittite people lived here 3,600 years ago. Another intriguing aspect to life in Avanos is the curious role of pigeons. There is much to explore in the region called Cappadocia. This rock on the left was their pigeon house. The one on the right was the place where they lived. Wow. As Ismail told me that he was the fifth generation in this house. So they don't know who had been before his family had moved in here. Ben Ismail, 1982'ye kadar ailecek oturduk. Burada babam ve patates ekimi, üzüm, kayısı gibi tarımla uğraşırdı babam. I was born here. In this house? Yeah, four generation living my family. Original uh, decoration, original fireplace, decoration, original, very old. Selçuk period. Oh, wow. Yeah, inside the shower, we see. <laughs> <laughs> Four kitchen, five plates, uh, tandoori, uh -huh. Indian tandoori. Yeah. We are building them well. Cutting the hot chalice, tandoori the yellow mask. Because in the old days, a lot of children, sorry to say that when the mother is working over there, when they start walking, they would fall into the fire. Mm -hmm. So when they start walking, they were tying them from their waist yeah. to those, yeah. and so they put a pillow on the ground so he or she would sit over there when the mother was working. Zordu, bu evlerde yaşamak. Çünkü yol durumu zor. Her şeyi hayvanla, eşek ve atla getirip götürüyorduk. Ve biz burayı 82'de boşalttıktan sonra bura bir müddet boş kaldı. O dönemde herkes tarım yapmak zorundaydı. Herkes mecburen çalışacaktı. Kadınlar, çocuklar, herkes geçim sıkıntısı için mecburen çalışacaktı. O dönem geçim çok zordu. Önceden güvercin evi olmayan, özüm bağı olmayan kız bile vermezlermiş. In the old days, if you didn't have a pigeon house or a vineyard, you couldn't get married. <laughs> because you know, as a man you have to show the in-laws that you can support the family. Oh, our tea has come. Oh, right. You see, the yellow ones are apple tea. Okay. The red ones are the regular tea. Black ones regular. Burayı turizme açtım ve turizme hizmet vermek için böyle bir evi sergilemek ve gelecek kuşa bu kültürü göstermek için. Demek ki diyorum ben kendim İyi bir evde yaşamışım, iyi bir mutlu hayat yaşamak istiyorum ve sonuna kadar bu evde yaşamak istiyorum. Beşe altı. 1964 doğumluyum ben. Avrupa'da doğdum. Yoharın mahalle, mahallem. Ben çocukluğumda işte kendimi bildiğimde işte 6-7 yaşındayken okula başlamadan evvel meşhur olması Kur'an'ın toprağın özel olması. Kızılırmanın geçmesi, Kızılırmanın yataklarına dağlardan Yetirmemiz Türkiye'nin birkaç yerinde de yapıyor. Ama burası Kapıdok'a turistik bölge olduğu için Avunus Çana daha sağlıklı. Ama benim dedem gel, daha büyük dedim, daha büyük dedim. 1807'de başlamış bu işe. O zaman kürk yaparlardı. Köylüleri o zaman bidon, 
filan olmadığı için teknoloji ilerledikçe çanakçılığı işte ince etmeye ince mal yapmaya başladık. Bidonlar çırınca avunuz çanağını bitirdi. Burada babadan oğula geçiyor. Okulu yok yani. Babam 70 yıldır yapardı bu mesleği. Babamdan da ben öğrendim. Babam babasından, babası dedesinden derken ben tam 6. nesil oluyorum yani bu meslekte. Bu şarabını, çanağını, çölmeni yapmasını. Ben zaten bu mesleği 8-10 yaşında başlıyorum çocuk yaşta. Yani çok hoşuma gidiyor. Stres atıyorum bu şeyde. Çamurla uğraşmak zevk veriyor. According to Cappadocian folklore, even blind men know when they enter the streets of Avanos for all the sounds of broken pots. There are many sounds and sights to engage you in Avanos while witnessing the landscape of Uchazar. Entertained by stories that have a life of their own. Experienced over and over for thousands of years. Ilijek is a small community in the town of Haji Bektash, a sacred center of Alevi Islam. Many of the 130 households make their living as farmers and stock breeders. Their day begins at first light, feeding the animals, taking care of the household chores and tending to their farms. There are traditional gender roles in Cappadocian society. Preparing meals is among the responsibilities of the women. Matamak is a small-leafed plant, popular in Turkish cuisine. It's very nutritious with a tart flavor and its roots are sometimes brewed into a tea with medicinal benefits. Community is important in village society and neighbors often work together. Several households share the metal griddle in this cooking area for making flatbread, which is eaten with most meals. Afternoons typically include a trip to Haji Bakhtash to shop for the evening meal. Market stalls are abundant with produce grown in the surrounding villages. Summer crops are dried and strung for storage. During winter, they will be rehydrated and made into a meal. The failure to exploit Turkey's great agricultural potential has led to inequalities in income between its rural and its urban residents. As a result, the youth of communities like Ilijek have moved to the urban areas looking for better opportunities. Children travel by government-funded transportation to attend school in high school Monday through Friday. There, they're provided lunch daily between the morning and afternoon sessions. In an effort to help rural areas gain better access to quality education, the Grand Circle Foundation has funded a library and a shared kitchen that benefits 500 children across five different schools. Life in the community of Ilijek quiets down in the evenings, a time to gather together and reflect on the day's work. When I was living in the Eastern Turkey in a small village, in a small community, the population of my village was about 300 people, but after uh, 
the agriculture became a missionarized, many of the people lost their job to work actually in the field and left, immigrated from the village to the cities. That's why the villages are shrinks. It's a very small village right now with like 60 people population. Turkey is a big country, almost as big as Texas in the States. That's why we have seven different regions in Turkey. Well, in different regions, we have different cultures, different music, different dance, and different cuisine. That's why if you go to the north, the music and the dance is totally different. When I was a student in the primary school and the high school, I was a member of the dancing club, actually. I was dancing the Eastern dance with the baggy pants. So I was also wearing the baggy pants, actually, when I was a student. Whenever we visit Cappadocia, um, and after hiking right in the middle of the beautiful rock formation, to see all this huge, heavy, big rock basalt stone on the top of the chimneys, which is unbelievable to see how it stays on the top of these formations. And after walking among the fairy chimneys, going to see the underground city, which built by the Hittites in 2000, BC walking through the narrow tunnel, discovering the different rooms and different levels, layers in uh, underground cities are just great. Imagine about 4,000 years old, underground cities and each one for, let's say, uh, 15, 20,000 people capacity. I'm looking forward to welcoming you in my country to teach the Turkish culture and hospitality to you. The Turkish coast and islands of Greece, an area filled with ancient legends, and the ruins where these legends once took place. So I've never been to Turkey before, and I'm just looking forward to the whole day's experience. Well, I'm really fascinated by seeing some of the ancient historical sites. Today I'm looking forward to getting on the boat. What mythic heroes will come to life for you, sailing the storied waters of the Aegean? Troy, best known as the besieged city in the tales of the Trojan War, was not considered to be a real place until a hillside was uncovered in 1870. So you will be able to see the different levels of the city from the very beginning. So we shall see some examples on the way. This level of the foundation, it goes back to Troy II and Troy III. These are the original foundation stones belonging to the fortification wall 2500 BC. It's a fantastic site. Uh, it gives you a view that I just hadn't experienced before. And although it's just basically you see stone laying around, the significance of it is quite astounding. It seems to come alive even though it's so old. And I would have to say that our guide has just done a fabulous job with the explanation of everything. The oracles told them that she is pregnant and this baby boy, he will be the reason for the destruction of the city of Troy. Troy is one of the most ancient cities in Asia Minor, which is our country today. And the story behind the Troy, especially Paris, Hecaba, uh, their children, abduction of Helen, this is a fascinating story. And I can imagine this story this war happened right in front of these gates and in front of these walls. I love this city. How did it feel to walk these streets in a city under siege by the Greeks in the 13th century BC? Because Paris, the young prince of Troy, abducted Helen, the beautiful queen of Sparta. Well, I'm real interested in the archaeology of it and the fact that there are these multiple layers of the city, that, that to me is interesting. Now a UNESCO World Heritage Site, 
Troy's ruins are the most significant evidence of the early contact between Anatolia and the rest of the Mediterranean world. Nested deep within the Kozak Valley, a village that time nearly forgot. Today is our, I mean, this is our chance to, to, for our village visit, to have lunch with the village people. We've been traveling large cities, and intermediate cities, so now the ability to come to a small village is, uh, that's really a luxury. But ahead of us, you will be seeing the Turkmen girl. This is this is Ben de yardımcı olurum. You are hired. Okay. Çek, şimdi. Whoops. Okay. Oh, thank you. Yes. Oh, this is lovely. Oh, this is wonderful. It's warm and crispy and tender. Locally crafted wine and fresh bread serve as an appetizer and an introduction to life here. It's tart. <laughs> it's not a sweet wine at all. It's quite a tart wine. Um, should taste pretty good with lunch. Oh, good. We're being spoiled. Yes. Mm. Oh. oh, these are uh, white like olives. Ah, nice. Tomato and eggplant. Tomato and... Eggplant. They make their yeah. olive oil also? Olive oil. Yeah, olive oil. oil, yeah. And the desserts. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> local, local, local dessert also. Oh, oh my. The cooking is so good, it's... Mm. You need that. It's love. <laughs> They're very gracious and she has a beautiful, beautiful outfit on. You're beautiful. Çok güzel yes, yapıyor abi. Yes. <laughs> yeah. Kendim işte. Did you make it? She does it herself. Oh, oh wonderful. wonderful. Okay, can't start until he's ready. Ready, yeah, exactly. We use it as a shawl. Oh, nice. Ah. That's quite nice. Really. Very nice. <laughs> Goes with your shirt. Welcome to Acropolis of Pergamon. Down below, there is the steepest Hellenistic theater from the ancient world. Built on a hill rising 1,000 feet above the surrounding valley, Pergamon was an important capital city in ancient times. And the theater was a very popular place for people to meet and also the scene for the big harvest festival each year. Most of the buildings and monuments in Pergamon date between 197 to 159 BC. Stand among the ruins. Imagine the activity of those long ago times and take part in an old tradition yourself. There, it's supposed to be if you put, get your coin to stick on the top of the column, your wish will come true. Unfortunately, I didn't throw it quite hard enough, so mine just went down. <laughs> With a private small ship as your vessel of discovery, sail forth to visit the classic monuments. The hilltop sanctuary where Hippocrates wrote his famous oath. The great battlefields where Troy, nearly lost, comes alive once again. I've learned a lot about the Iliad, which I read in college, but never understood quite the same way. Revel in the timeless beauty and heritage of the Turkish coast and islands of Greece on an epic voyage of your own. Hello, Mary Haba. 
As I was growing up, I traveled the entire country. Every year,、uh, we would take a trip with our car for about a month in the summer. And my dad was very much interested in、uh, outdoor activities as well as ancient sites and the hidden treasures of my country. Aphrodisias is my favorite ancient site that we have in Turkey. Since it is a little bit inland, not many tourists go there. You feel like you just walk into this gorgeous Roman site, and you're there all by yourself. I actually took my guests to Gezi Park protests. A couple of the guests were interested in what was going on politically in Turkey in Istanbul, and then I suggested if they would like to, that they can come with me. One night, about four or five came. The second night, about ten fifteen came, and on the third night, the whole bus we went out to the park, and I taught them a couple of Turkish words in order to protest. And the most important thing was clapping, so we all clapped. And as we walked, it was a great discovery for our guests.、Uh, That the people who were protesting on Istiklal Street were、um, so amazed to see Americans protesting along with them, and they were very proud of themselves, and I was very proud of them. Pamukkale, which means cotton castle, is outstanding. It's this white terrace, so beautiful, along the cliff of those pools filled with、uh, thermal. Uh, water, people swimming in them, bathing, and、uh, they have been there for centuries in order to get some cure. It takes your breath away. It is so spectacular, and I think everyone should see it. I hope that you will、uh, come visit my country and join me to discover the hidden treasures of Crossroads of Turkey together.